Oh, wow. I should have taped that down. Whew. That just cored out the gel right there. And <laughs> some dirt worked its way in, but pedals left the block here, here, up here. <laughs> there goes the round. And you got about seven inches of this first big wound cavity. And who knows? I mean, we lost. There's nothing. There's nothing kept in this block exit here as well and uh, <laughs> my table got cracked from the from the impact the board hitting it so hard <laughs> look at my poor table <laughs> that's how powerful 458 SOCOM is and these 300 grain controlled fracturing loads from Lehigh Defense that's insane Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. As cool as that gel test was, this video is not about the ammo, it's about the rifle I used to shoot that ammo. It's called the CMMG Anvil, and what makes it unique among 458 SOCOMs is that it's not built on a standard size AR frame. It's built on a shortened 308 size AR frame, bringing it to the total length almost of a standard size AR, but it's got the beefiness of like a 308 AR, like AR-10 or SR-25. The bolt carrier is also much larger than the standard AR, and the bolt is 308 size bolt. This is all because CMMG wanted to build something that could reliably handle the power of 4570 government shoved into a cartridge that could fit into a standard size AR-15 magazine. The idea is that all of the extra beefiness of the anvil will give greater reliability over time and will allow it to handle much more powerful cartridges. And that's why it's coming up next on Twang and Bang. What's most notable about the CMMG Anvil is that it's built on modified large frame AR receivers typically used for calibers like 308 Winchester or 260 Remington. CMMG is actually calling this platform mid-size because the receivers are shortened in the rear by three quarters of an inch and the deeply flared magwell is designed for standard size AR mags only. This results in a complete rifle weighing a moderate 7.5 pounds without optic. This is the XBE variant, complete with Magpul CTR stock and MOE pistol grip and a crisp single stage mil spec trigger. The XBE2 replaces this trigger with the Geissele SSA and the budget oriented T series runs a mil spec trigger with mil spec plastic. The carbine length gas system sits under a lightweight key mod handguard and is metered by an SLR Century 7 adjustable gas block. No Allen key is included with the anvil, though I've linked in the video description to where you can buy one for under $10 that's long enough so you don't have to remove the handguard to make your adjustments. The 16-inch barrel is nitrided 416 stainless steel with a 1 and 14-inch twist to work with both supersonic and subsonic loads. Threaded 5 8 by 32, the muzzle is capped with a CMMG SV muzzle brake to tame the famed recoil of the 458 SOCOM. In testing, CMMG discovered that standard AR-15 magazines were not as reliable as they wanted with the larger bolt face of the anvil, so they modified Lancer L5 mags specifically for this rifle. Though rated at 10 rounds, I had no problems loading 11 rounds and firing them all without malfunction. One magazine comes with the anvil, though additional mags will be available through CMMG's website or their dealer network. MSRP starts at $18.50 with all variants backed by CMMG's lifetime quality guarantee. A lot of companies have tackled the 458 SOCOM and come out with some really great rifles, but it's hard to get away from the fact that the round is super powerful and AR-15 size rifles can take a beating from it. So CMMG decided, well, we're going to approach this differently. Yes, it's nice to have something that powerful and a rifle the size of an AR-15, but let's build it more on the large frame AR chassis that we already have in 308 so that we can use a very large 
bolt carrier, very large bolt, and a very large frame. But at the same time, they made the, the magwell fit just an AR-15 size mag. So you're still using AR-15 style mags, though they did find that modifying feed lips a little bit on uh, a Lancer mag gave them much greater reliability than using standard AR mags. So I'm gonna test that out myself. And this is what makes it the anvil right here. It is a very large bolt carrier, very large bolt straight out of their 308. And what this means is you have a lot more material around the case head on this bolt than you're gonna have on a standard 458 SOCOM built on an AR-15 platform with an AR-15 size bolt. And so the idea is that this bolt is gonna survive a whole lot more abuse than a standard 458 SOCOM bolt because this is an area of weakness in the original design. So I think this is a pretty cool way of tackling the problem with 458 SOCOM. You give up a bit in weight and in size, but you're going to likely gain a whole lot in reliability long term. Now let's see how the anvil does with some of the more popular specialty ammo on the market. This is Corbon TDPX 300 grains cooking out of here at 1900 feet per second. This is the hottest stuff I think I have. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah, it's like a 12 gauge, but, but not too bad. This is Ventura Tactical 300 grain control fracturing. Yep, I might need a trip to the dentist after this day. <laughs> That'll rattle your fillings a little bit. This rubber dummy has seen better days. That's what happens when it gets hit by a 458 SOCOM with a very flat point. Instead of cutting its way through, it just takes the material with it. Ouch! <laughs> and uh, that's a direct hit right there on the nose big holes big holes yeah this is gonna be a quick way to <laughs> ruin this target but i don't care this is black butterfly nozzler ballistic tip should be a little bit easier on the front of the target anyway if it expands it's gonna take big chunks out i don't know where this is gonna hit That's fun. Obviously it's high and to the left, but that was fun. <laughs> Man, the recoil did get to me and I pulled a couple of those. <laughs> that is some hot freaking stuff. That is that's real like 12 gauge magnum right there. <laughs> That's a punch both directions. Okay, <laughs> this is ammo buffet. This is an alternating load of all the different kinds of ammo that I brought with me today. 11 rounds, I don't even know what the order is, but let's just see how this cycles. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I'll tell you, by the time you get to the 10th trigger pull, <laughs> the reticle starts to swim around a bit. <laughs> Your body starts to resist, but it's still fun. <laughs> when hunting or shooting from tight spaces, you might not want a full length mag hanging out from underneath this. So I'm gonna try a Gen M3 PMAG 10 rounder. I'm able to fit four rounds into this to see how it works. It's a little tight going into magwell. This wasn't designed to shoot any mag other than those Lancers. But I thought I'd try PMAGs as well. 
that okay? No problems, bolt lock back. It's not gonna drop free. And there aren't any nicks or anything on the, on the feed lips. So I don't think the bolt carrier or the bolt are smacking into it at all. It's good to know that a 10 rounder will work. Ah. Nope. The recoil was too much for the Vortex Viper PST. There you go. Got to be careful what optic you put on it. That's unfortunate. But I know Vortex will replace it no problem. Two days later and Vortex had a brand new Viper PST at my door. The whole reason I was running that for testing the ammo is because for me, the anvil would pull primary duty as a hunting rifle. So I want to see what it can do at 100 yards. That's excellent performance for what is priced as training ammo. It actually did better than a lot of the hunting rounds I tested, which average about 2 to 3 MOA. However, I did get excellent performance from the Corbon TDPX. I found that the wide variety of loads out there perform very differently from each other, so you will need to find what is the best match for your own anvil. Since I brought an extra gel block with me, I also tested Lehigh Defense's Extreme Penetrator ammo with quite unexpected results, as you will see. Oh man, my table is getting trashed. That's insane. Watch the front edge of the table as I switch between these two frames. The gel might not have ripped apart, but it still imparted tremendous force through the 2x6 and into my aluminum table. This is the potential for wounding that even FBI gel like used here just cannot show. Oh man, look at that. You can see it is a cross pattern in the front of that block. And you can see it twisting on through the block. And what's crazy is, look here. Look at all of that damage to this FBI gel. And that's already uh, nine inches into the block right about here. And I, I would not have expected that. That's crazy. And uh, so, okay, so look at how little damage there is here. And look at my table. Look at that. You can't tell me that when people say, well, velocity, stretch cavity doesn't cause any damage, look what it did to this inelastic table. I mean, it's, it's broken. I just broke it. Two shots of 458 SOCOM cracked this two by six and broke my table. That's why CMMG came out with the anvil right there. This is crazy fun to shoot. It's a 4570 guide gun, semi-auto. Of course, I could feel it on this end as well, but I did all my stand-up testing earlier in the video without adjusting the gas block. I just pulled it out of the box and I shot it because I know a lot of people, that's what they're gonna do. But just like with any rifle that comes from the factory with an adjustable gas block, you should spend time tuning it to the, to the ammo that you're gonna shoot. I've got a link in the video description for this tool, which I got off of Amazon, and it fits right in there and click, click, click. I was able to adjust this so it was much softer shooting for the sit down testing, the bench rest testing. And it makes it easier not only on your shoulder, but it also makes it easier on the rifle itself. So whether you're getting the anvil or another rifle with an adjustable gas block, you should always do that. Adjust the gas block for your ammo. 
The other thing you need to know about the anvil is at least this is a pre-production unit. I don't know if it's going to be this way in a production unit or not, but the magwell is tight for AR-15 standards. I had zero problems with the Lancer mags, none whatsoever. They insert, they drop free, no problem. P mags insert just fine, but there's just enough friction that they won't drop free when, when you hit the mag release, but they pull out just fine. The problem then comes from USGI mags. Uh, the irony a lot of people don't appreciate is metal mags will bow a whole lot more when you shove them full, especially with a fat cartridge uh, like the 458 SOCOM. So with this loaded, I had to really work to get it in the mag well, and after I shot it dry, it was a lot of work getting it back out. So at least in my pre-production unit, USGI aluminum mags are a no-go. Of course, uh, their recommendation is the Lancer mags that they make specific, they modify specifically for the anvil, and they work just fine. And honestly, I think that's what you should use because the feed lips are modified specifically for the 458 SOCOM cartridge, specifically to run as a single stack mag instead of a double stack mag. Though, if you have other mags that you, you want to run with it, the P mags uh, I found did work nonetheless. If you want to learn more about the anvil, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can see the links right here. And be sure to click right here to see my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.